Greetings and welcome to this video on getting started with Bootstrap 5. If you were here for the last video, then you're already up and running and you know what Bootstrap is and how to get it into your website. This video will cover the Bootstrap grid and how we use it to organize the contents of our web pages. We'll start with a quick explanation of what I mean by a grid in this context. Then we'll look at the fundamental building blocks of a Bootstrap grid layout being first the container class and then a structuring of the grid using rows and columns. Last, we'll look at how Bootstrap allows us to easily create responsive layouts that rearrange content depending on how much space is available in the viewport or in the browser so that websites will look good on multiple screen sizes from very wide desktop displays to narrow mobile devices. Along the way, we'll go through a number of different demonstrations to clarify how the Bootstrap grid works, and all of those will be available in CodePens in the links found below of this video. What do I mean by a grid? A grid in this case refers to the way a web page is divided up so that you can arrange or order content within it. The grid separates the page into different sections, and you use those sections to control where content is placed and how the overall page is structured. As an example of this, let's take a look at the project website for this course. The main content of this page found in this section here is built on a grid in the sense that there is one overall row here, which has within it two columns. On the left, there's this small sidebar or the narrow column. And on the right, there's the larger main column with the main content. And this is what I mean when I say a website can be built on a grid. It's organized so that content is placed within rows and columns. This grid is responsive in the sense that when I change the size of the window and it becomes a bit too narrow to fit everything right about there, the layout changes so that these columns now stack. This here was the first column we saw, the sidebar, it's now sitting on top. And underneath here, the main column is underneath that one. Uh, so that they're not crammed together side by side as they are here. There are three main building blocks to a bootstrap grid. The broadest category is the container. Generally, a container will hold a number of rows and columns, and oftentimes it may even hold all of the content on the web page. And within the container, the structure is created by rows and columns in that order. That is, rows are primary to columns. Rows contain columns, columns contain your website content. Most of the flexibility that the Bootstrap grid provides is found in using different types of column classes. For example, you could use classes to create a number of equal width columns within a row, as in the first row in this example. Or you can use column classes to create multiple unequal width columns by assigning the different columns different amounts of space within the row. Here's another example of a container with one row and three columns within it. The HTML for this structure would be first a div for the container, which wraps everything, then a div for the row, which wraps both the columns, and within that row, three columns of equal width, which in this case would be bootstraps.call class. And your bootstrap grid is going to be basically a repetition of this structure in various different forms throughout your website. So much for the preliminaries. Let's start writing code. I'm going to begin by opening up this bootstrap demo folder in VS code. And this is now the grid file, which we created previously. I'll start by just changing the headings so they make a bit more sense. And our topic for now is containers. There are three types of containers in bootstrap. First is the basic container class, dot container. And as we'll see, those have a set width for different browser sizes. Next are fluid containers, dot container dash fluid. They'll take up 100% of the browser width, no matter how wide or narrow it is. And third are responsive containers, which are kind of a combination between the first two. I'm going to start with just the basic container, and that's the dot container class. I'll put a bit of content inside there. And actually, let's give this a background color of yellow. So BG warning is bootstrap for background yellow. 
bootstrap colors are not named by the color name but by function so yellow is kind of your warning function and we'll get into color utilities later hit save let's bring this up with live server and this is what it looks like so this is your bootstrap container you'll see that as the viewport changes the width of that container changes from one fixed width to the next and it's centered on the page this container like the other container classes provides basic padding and margin to center your container and ensure that content within it is going to be aligned as you add rows and columns but what's going on with this fixed width at different viewport sizes well let's jump into the bootstrap documentation and get a bit more information about this so again i'm going to go to getbootstrap.com into the docs and under layout there's a section for containers and we see that those fixed widths in the dot container class are coming from bootstrap's default breakpoints which are found at six increments starting at zero so from zero to 540 pixels is considered your extra small size from 540 to 720 is small 720 to 960 is medium and so forth so each jump we see here represents the container size dropping down from one breakpoint to the next the second type of container class we'll look at is at the bottom here container whoop, container fluid and it's in some ways the opposite of the dot container class it is not breakpoint responsive, at least in the sense of changing at each breakpoint. Across all viewport sizes, it will take up 100% of the width of the screen. Let's make one of those guys next. Container fluid. And I'll put content inside here as well. I'm going to make this a little more rational and call it container fluid. And I'm going to change the top container content to dot container background warning save and oh, you know what i'm gonna put some space between these as well my5 will do it save and so here is the container fluid class and it takes up 100 percent of the width of the screen at every breakpoint size last we've got the rest of these containers and these are called responsive containers and they are represented by these five class names container sm container md and so forth and they behave like the container fluid class up to a certain breakpoint after which they'll behave like the dot container class so let's look at for example container md at extra small and small this container will take up 100 percent of the viewport just like container fluid but at the medium breakpoint and above it'll behave in the responsive way that the dot container class does we can make one of those right now container md and i'm going to call this dot container md and again i'll give it background color warning so we can see its parameters bring it up and here we are so we are above the medium size breakpoint so container md is behaving in the same way as dot container but when we go below the medium size breakpoint container md starts behaving like container fluid and at the extra small breakpoint all three behave in the same way as container fluid in the sense that they take up 100 percent of the viewport but a container by itself does not create a grid so let's do that right now I'll begin by creating a container and I'm going to use container fluid for this and I'll give this an h2 heading for rows and columns first I want to create a row with one column and we've seen the structure for this already that is we start with a, a div a generic div for the row and within that another generic div with class attribute and class name of column control s to save bring this guy up and believe it or not this here is a row with one column as it is it's not at all clear how the row and the column are interrelated 
Um, we can clarify that by adding borders around each, and to do so, I'm going to now make use of our external style sheet. So I'm going to start by creating a class of border1, which will have a border property of solid red. And another class, border2, again a border property, and this time dashed blue-violet. Hit save. On the row, I'll add border1, and on the column, I'll add border2. And last, to make this all work, add a link tag to our styles.css folder. Hit save, bring it all up, and there we go. So we can see here that the row and column are coextensive. They're taking up the same space, and they're both taking up the full width of the browser because we've used that container fluid class. Now to make it more clear how the row and column are related, I'm going to put some margin around the column. And for that, I'll just use M2. This is a bootstrap class to add uh, basically just a little bit of margin, and we'll get into how that works later. Hit save, bring it up, and now we can see how the column is clearly sitting within the row. Typically, you're going to want to have more than one column within your rows, and we can do that easily by simply adding more column elements within each row. So let's start by making a row with three columns. And I'll give our row a border class of 1, border 1, and the columns will each have border 2. And for this demonstration, I'm still using just our basic .call class. And I'll also add m2 to each of the columns, and my5 to the row. Hit save, bring it up, and here we have a row with three columns. The first thing you'll notice is that all three columns are taking up an equal amount of space. And that's a function of the dot call class in Bootstrap. That class will take up basically whatever space is available, whether that's the entire row, as in the first example, or a one-third portion of the row, as in the second. This class does not have a defined width. But what if you want to have multiple columns with different widths within a row? We can do that by assigning each column a different amount of the available space. To demonstrate this, I'm going to jump back into the code, and I'm going to create a row with 12 columns. And I choose 12 because the bootstrap grid, or a bootstrap row, is divided into 12 sections. And I'm going to number these guys, bear with me. So let's save that and bring it up, and this is what we get. So one row, 12 sections. Now this row is using our dot .call class, and for that reason, we've got 12 equal sections. In Bootstrap, to transform this dot .call class into a class of specified width, you would add dash and then a number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever the case may be. In this instance, I'm going to start by giving each column a specified width of 1. Hit save, pull it up, and it looks the same, the reason being that this is a 12-column row divided into 12 columns of specified width. But if I were to copy and paste this last row and give it, again, the column size 1, this is my 13th row, hit save, and it doesn't fit. It, uh, it just wraps. The reason is because you cannot fit 13 columns on a, a row divided into 12. If we want to control how much space each column takes up, we can do that by assigning each column a certain portion of the 12 available units of space. So let's go up here and copy and paste this three column row that we made before. Put it in right there, and now I'm going to remove the M2 column classes because they will mess up the demonstration. For this demonstration, I'm going to assign the first column six units of space, the second column I'll give 2, and the third column I will give 4. So 6, 2, and 4 come to 12, and this should work out to an unequally divided grid. And my, uh, I've got to pull my browser up here a little bit. This is what I just created. No, this is what I just created. Call 6 takes up half of the available space. Call 2 takes up the 2-unit two, two portion, and call 4, 4 units. As I resize the browser, they each take up proportionately the same amount of space. Half, wide, 2 twelfths, and 4 twelfths.
and we change the amount of space that each column is taking up by simply changing the number assigned to it. So I'm going to give the first one here eight units of space, the second one one unit of space, and the last one three. And to make the change a little bit more apparent, I'll give background color of light blue. That's BG Info, BG Danger for the second, and BG Warning for the third. So watch that column, and we can see that the relative amount of space each took up just changed. Or again, I could make the first one one, the second one two, and the third one nine. Watch that column, I'm gonna hit save, and again, they've, they've taken up a different amount of space. So you can pretty much do any combination of numbers or proportions of that 12 unit row that you want. I'll just fix the descriptions in these columns so they're accurate. And with the background color, I don't need that border, so I'm gonna remove the classes border one and border two. One key drawback with the grid layout we've created here is that it doesn't change based on the size of the browser. So no matter how narrow or wide this browser is, these columns take up proportionately the same amount of space. And that's where we need the responsive grid layout. And the way we do that in Bootstrap is we add breakpoint sizes to our column classes. Let's see how this works. I'll start off with a heading for responsive columns. And to make the demonstration a little bit cleaner because we've got a lot of stuff going on in this website already i'm actually just going to comment out everything above here to the top of the container save and all right that's a bit cleaner now let's start with another row with three columns and for now i'm going to leave it at the typical dot call class and i'm going to throw a bunch of random lengthy content in there just so that we can see the problem of column wrapping give this background danger for one, info for another, and warning for the last. Save that, and this is what we have. So these dot .call classes are horizontal and equally spaced, but once the content can't all fit three in a row, they have to start to wrap. The, the content forces them to wrap, so now we've got two on top and one on the bottom, which is not typically how we're going to want them to wrap, and then right about there, all three are forced to stack. So, you know, in the search as possible terms, that may count as responsive, but it's not what we're looking for. In Bootstrap, you create a responsive layout by adding on to the call class a dash and then specifying the breakpoint at which you want the layout to change. The way it works is if you're using a responsive column, Bootstrap assumes that it's going to be starting mobile first with a layout in which everything is stacked. And then it'll maintain that until it hits the breakpoint at which you specify a change from that default behavior, which in this case would be the medium breakpoint. So what we're going to see here is at the extra small and small size, these three columns are going to be stacked. And then at the medium size, they're going to go horizontal. So let's save that and see what happens. So here we are, they're stacked, extra small, probably about small now, and then right about there, okay, right about there, so they go horizontal. So this represents uh, moving into the medium breakpoint. And this is how mobile first design works in Bootstrap. The default behavior when you're using a responsive or a breakpoint specific class is the mobile first or, or the narrow width behavior, and the browser will deviate from that once it hits a rule that's engaged at a certain breakpoint. And instead of this gibberish, I'm going to call this what it is, which is .callMD. If you don't want your breakpoints to be functioning as .call classes or these equal width classes, then the way to make unequal breakpoint specific classes is basically the same as we've already seen. So after the breakpoint specification, you would then specify how much space within the row you want the columns to take up. So let's make the first one here one, the second one four, and the last one seven. So what this means is that at the extra small size, this is gonna function mobile first, it'll stack, and at the medium breakpoint, it'll go horizontal with the first column occupying one unit of space, the second one occupying four, and the last one occupying seven. You're not limited to one change like this from stacked to horizontal in some formation. 
you can, so to speak, combine or layer breakpoint specific classes to have different layouts or different variations at different breakpoint sizes. For example, you might want your columns to stack at the extra small size, then go horizontal at the small size with all columns equal width, and then on the larger size, remain horizontal but with columns at unequal width. The rule for one of those columns would look like, as in this example, call SM2 followed by call LG8. Let's create a version of that example right now and see how it works a bit more clearly. So again, I'll make a, a row with three columns in it. And for the first column, we want it to be stacked at the small size, or pardon me, the extra small size. And then from small and above, we want it to occupy two columns. And that's going to apply all the way to the large breakpoint size, at which point we want it to occupy eight columns. For the remaining two columns, I'm simply going to use call dash SM2. I'll give these guys some background color, danger, info, and warning. And for this demonstration, I also want to have a border around the row. What this combination of column classes means is that all three columns will be stacking on the smallest size. At the small size and above, they'll behave as dot call classes, or pardon me, in this case, dot call two classes. So they'll each occupy two units of space. And in this case, that does not add up to 12. So we won't be using the full 12 column grid, but that's fine. That's a luxury you have in Bootstrap. And then this first column class has a class rule that engages at the large breakpoint size, forcing it to occupy eight units of space. Um, and the second two do not have that, so they'll simply occupy two units all the way through to the widest browser size. Save that. I'm going to put some margin here. Margin top and bottom. And so let's see how this works. Small size, or pardon me, extra small size, they're stacking. Then at the small size, yep, they are occupying each two units of space with the remaining part of the row empty. And then at the large size, now the first column is taking up eight units of space and the last two are still taking up their two units. So by combining these column classes, you can have quite a bit of flexibility in how your grid is laid out, including both stacking going horizontal and also how much space each column occupies. A key part of controlling how the content in your website looks is column alignment. And that's what we're going to talk about next. For this section, I'm going to create a new HTML file because what we have here is already getting sufficiently busy. So I'll comment back in our other stuff. You can see that we've done quite a bit. And to make the new file, I'll just copy our template. And this will be called grid alignment. We can add our link tag to styles.css. I'll start this off by making a container class and then again a row with three columns. And I'm going to make these column classes call auto so that they will only take up as much space as their content requires and give it a border two. And on the row, I'm going to give it a border one with some margin on the bottom. Save that. Let's open it up. The bootstrap grid is built using Flexbox. And for that reason, we can use the Flexbox properties to align items within bootstrap rows. So let's take a look at how that would work without using bootstrap. I'm going to go back into my developer tools. And you can see on the row class here, it has a display property of flex. So that row is a flex container. And for that reason, we'll be able to change the alignment of items within it by adding these justify content properties. So I'm just going to change. Yeah, there we go. So justify. So I've added justify content center here. And you can see that the items are now centered. If I change that to flex end, then the items go to the end of the row. And flex start is the default position, but I'll just show anyway. That's what happens with the flex start. And this convenience of Flexbox obviously was not lost on the Bootstrap folks. They have justify content and align content utility classes, which we can use on the rows by simply adding Bootstrap classes to make those things happen. So back into the code. We've already seen how this first row of items is behaving like a flex container with the items in the start position. I'm just going to duplicate this row 
and we can run through the various alignment properties that are available to us. I'll start with Justify Content Center. Hit save, there we are. So our, as we saw previously, these flex items are now centered. Copy, paste. I'll change this now to Justify Content End, and we've got them all at the end. And then if I were to put Justify Content Start, it would look exactly like this first row. Let's keep running through the list. Copy, paste. This time I'll use Justify Content Between. This spaces the items so that there's a maximum amount of space between them. Justify content around, similar, but this time now there's an equal amount of space between each item where the space on either end of the row would add up to the space between any other item. If that's not the look we're going for, we can try justify content evenly. So now there is truly an even amount of space between each item and between the items and the edge of the rows. And to make this all a little bit easier on the eyes, I'm just going to replace some of my border properties with background pro properties. These classes are very easy to apply, and it's all built in through the Bootstrap grid using Flexbox. So these are very handy ways to align content and control how things are placed on your page. Just like with any Flex items, you can also align content vertically and Bootstrap has classes built in and ready to go for that. For this demonstration, I'm going to need to give our rows a little bit of extra space so that the columns can move within them vertically. And so I'm going to make a new class here called Demo Row. I'll give it a minimum height of 6 rem. Background color of lavender. And margin bottom of 2 rem. Save that. And I'm going to be tricksy here and see if I can do four rows at once. So each row is going to have a class of demo row. And within each row, there will be three columns, which will each have the class of border one. Let's see if that worked out. And there it is. To begin with, I'm going to use a bootstrap class called Align Items Start. And we'll see how this changes things. Hit save. You can see now that each of the items is no longer stretching to fill the entire vertical space of the container, and they're all aligned vertically at the top. And to make my life a little bit easier here, I'm going to copy and paste that class of Align Items Start, put it on each of my rows, and then I only have to change one word at a time, and this one's going to be a line items center. So that's the second one here, which I just did. And we can see that the items within the column are centered vertically. Similarly, a line items end puts them all at the bottom. And those are your vertical alignment options. Unless you want to align only one item at a time. And that's what I'm going to do in this, this bottom row here. So I'll actually remove a line item start off from the bottom row. I'll replace the border with background color secondary and text light. And now we'll use the align self properties to align the individual items separately from the others in the row. Align self start puts the item at the top without affecting the others. Line self center, puts it in the center, and the line self end puts the item down at the very bottom. Once you understand that Bootstrap's rows are flex containers, it really opens up a lot of possibilities for using flex utilities and flexbox properties to manipulate how your content is placed within the website. In the final project for this course, we'll see how we can use these alignment properties, which are basically Bootstrap's flex utilities, in the context of a wider project. And in the next video in this series, we'll look at Bootstrap utility classes, including what a utility class is, particularly as distinct from a Bootstrap component class, and we'll take a look at some of the most commonly used Bootstrap utility classes, 
including some for colors, spacing, and text. I hope you enjoyed this video. We've really only scratched the surface of what the Bootstrap Grid has to offer. There's a lot more to learn about the tools Bootstrap has available for laying out the content in your website. If you want to learn more about Bootstrap with all its nuances, tricks, and traps, then you may be interested to check out my courses available on Udemy. See you in the next video.